engineered and then followed by yeah. <laughs> crazy thing that I'm supposed to understand. Oh, geez, Tell me you're a railroad engineer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Would you like to call tonight's meeting to order? Uh, Town of Pompey Planning Board meeting for April 18th, 2022. If we could, could I repeat that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> April 18, 2022. If we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Oh, where's the flag? Right there. Oh, okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. First, uh, welcome back from our break, uh, Roy, back to our board. John Shaheen has informed me he will not be in attendance tonight. So we can go down and just everybody quick introduce themselves. Starting from here, yes. Kevin Corson, uh, live on Windy Hill Lane, been on the planning board for a long time. Dan Bargabas. Um, Limber Pine Circle, and I've been on the starting eight years on the planning board. Um, Roy Smith, I live by Kelly Road, just off Berwyn, and I've been on the board for here, I think, 18 years. Mr. Smith, uh, chairman of the board, um, far too long on the board, maybe um, 25 plus years, and we're just on the road on Route 20. Uh, Carl Ferenkrug has been on the board for probably, uh, I don't know, 10, 10 plus years. Uh, I live on uh, Trillium Trail in uh, Pompey Pines. Deb Cook, I'm the newbie. I uh, live on Pompey Center Road. Okay. Jamie Sutton, planning board attorney. John Dunkel, planning board engineer. Great. I'm Diane Finnegan, the attorney for the applicant. Okay. And my name is Dave Stringer, and I'm the developer of Mallard's Landing in Manlius. Okay. And both of those are on our agenda this evening, so they are joining us via Zoom. So, uh, last planning board meeting was March 21st, 2022. Um, hopefully, everybody's had a chance to go back over the minutes. We have a motion to approve as presented. So moved. Second. I'll second it. By Carl, second by Kevin. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries to accept the board minutes March 21st as presented. Uh, first on our agenda this evening, uh, Hootnick subdivision, uh, Sally Hootnick and attorney Diane Finnegan. Uh, so lot on Brickyard Falls Road, parcel number 004-01-03.1. And this is a preliminary review. And um, application has come in. Obviously, we've been working on this. There's been a couple of subdivisions off and a lot line adjustment. And now the first phase of subdivision. And we have a new application for that. Uh, short environmental assessment form has been submitted. Fees have been paid. There's comments. There's um, maps that were submitted. Do you have any large maps with you? Like, no. Big ones. <laughs> Not. I have a little one. Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Um, And D.W. Hannig was supposed to send two large maps over. I apologize if she has if he hasn't done that. I apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't have them. Diane, Bob is here. Is he? Bob, yes. do you have them? Oh, no. We're no. <laughs> out. Wait, no, wait. I do have one, but this is. Okay. Not roll. Pardon me? I said not roll. Not roll. Okay. 
If I share my screen, can you guys see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's the same one we got in the email, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Is the screen large enough for you to see a larger version of the tiny map that you have? Yes. Yep. <clears throat> What, what's the date, the last revised date on that, um, Diane? I think it's 3.23 of this year. Let me look at the bottom. Uh, this is two, this is the last revised is 2.25.2022 in the revision section. I think I got this in an email in March, but I think it says revised two lot subdivision 225. I do have one that concurs with that date. 222 or 225? 225-2022, revised two lot subdivision is the last. It's right after mitten lot in the revision section. Here at the bottom. This one has um, this one has the Hammerhead Roadway. It has proposed buildings in Lot One B and twenty point seven one acres to the center line of the road for Lot Two B. That should have come in yes. in in small with the package that was sent. We do have it. So, um, I guess whether you, Diane, or Sally, somebody can start speaking about this now. Okay. Um, everybody's aware that we've been working on this for uh, a quite a you know a couple of years now, and it started out as a 29-acre parcel um, of land across from Brookgod Falls and across from the. Um, subdivision that Sally lives in. She's owned this property for almost 30 years. Um, she's been trying to find a way to create um, kind of a residential studio for herself to work in so that she has her the other portion of her house that she's been using as a studio available for her children um, who are married and having children. They want to be able to stay there now and then. Um, so she would like to build uh, a studio um, on the land that she currently owns. It's It's been a work in progress because we have had to deal with a very unusually conformed lot. Um, there's only frontage on a town road of 250 feet and it's an agricultural district. So it only allows for you know one piece of property unless we um, extend the frontage by by having an additional roadway put in. We tried over the course of the last two years to do an accessory structure to do all kinds of things, but truthfully, you know, um, they were they were not really acceptable. Um, or at least we didn't feel they were. Uh, we gave many options and the board really uh, felt that the, the the way to maybe move forward would be to create frontage by, by building a town road. And it, it's such a large parcel that I think uh, would limit the ability of Sally to move forward with a sale if she couldn't subdivide it. Uh, she wants to, have a portion of the property remain with her so she can go forward with a sort of a residential studio set up. It's across from her main residence, but not accessible from her main residence because the falls uh, bisect the properties. 
she had a lot directly across from her main residence that was not a part of the 29 acre parcel but we've since integrated that into um this parcel and then we sold off uh five acres to john mitten uh who changed his lot line to incorporate those acres in the back of this parcel uh, to give himself a buffer and some access to the stream. Um, that sales occurred. Um, now at this point, Sally wants to create a five acre lot, which is conforming under the agricultural uh, or farm district um, minimum lot sizes. And she wants to create a new lot uh, for purposes of resale um, down the road. Um, the individual that she is currently intending on uh, selling it to is with you today. Uh, she, however, was advised by council that until um, there was a true subdivision that it wasn't in her interests to go forward with an application, not knowing whether you would prove uh, preliminary preliminarily or otherwise this uh, subdivision so what we what we have proposed to you now is taking the remaining acreage which is 26 acres and subdividing it into a 20.71 acre lot and a 5.01 acre lot um, sally intends to um, have a i keep calling it a residential building and the reason I do that is because she intends to make sure that the well and septic fields are able to sustain a later uh, residential building, even though she initially will only use it as a studio with a, you know, a toilet and a sink for her, maybe a kitchen sink for her painting. She does artwork and requires, because of the long time she's there and because of the paints and things she uses, uh, you know, septic field and a sink in order to do her business. Um, it's really uh, a home studio, if you will, but it's a separate building. But we recognize the fact that as a planning board, you'll be concerned about future use. And so she's planning to make sure that going forward, she meets all specifications and necessities and site plan approval. Uh, for a residential building in the event at some future time, it becomes more than a, a studio with garage doors to get large pieces of work in and out, and it turns into a more of a residential structure down the road. She also has a daughter who's pregnant and a son who likes to visit, so who knows <laughs> what the future brings. <laughs> so, um, Really, what we have before you now is a plan to subdivide what is now a 26 acre lot into a five acre and a almost 21 acre lot. Um, of all the proposals that we brought to the board's attention because of the limited frontage and the fact that it's considered an agricultural or a farm lot, we need 250 feet of frontage. And frankly, you know, Sue and others have said the only possibility would be to create a new uh, road so that the frontage issue is conforming. So that's all I have. If anybody has questions, please let me know. I got a microphone. Thanks. Oh, oh, good. Can I make this any bigger so that people can see more of what they're interested in or move it around a little? This. This lot right now. So I'm going to this one. one us now. But she wants to make it. Maybe that's what we go to. It's just it's going for a building for a this what is this a this is a library yeah. 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 Oh I see she's making completely separate. Yeah. 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 Y
my 18. Yeah, she is talking about this one. My three questions. Right, right. But she's got to do it. Oh, guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so the two buildings that are shown on lot 1B, those are proposed buildings? No, one is to the right closest to Brickyard Falls Road is the location of the proposed septic system. Okay. And then the one that is further back in the lot that's more perpendicular to the roadway is a proposed, you know, barn with utilities like a sink, counter, and toilet. Again, it's a strange situation because as an artist that makes and, and sells to local hospitals and others, abstract art, some of her pieces are, you know, 25 feet tall, 20 feet tall, you know, and wide. And it's difficult for her to make pieces of that size without having a garage door to move them in and out of the structure. It's difficult. She has to often rent space and whatnot. So what she wants to do as she progresses in her career is have a you know, a separate, a studio separate from her current residence that allows for her to create larger works and and move them in and out successfully. So the initial building isn't going to meet your accessory structure, um, you know, code, because even though she considers it a barn, it's not a part of her current lot and frankly, you know, she needs a sink and she needs water and she needs septic. So it's not a house, but it's not a barn. It's, you know, call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it a residential studio. Right. Well, it, that, that's the issue is if you call it a residential studio, then it has to meet all the requirements for a residence. Sure, and it will. When? Well, at this point, it's it's difficult for Sally to move forward, not knowing what um, whether she can subdivide it, whether the road is appropriate. I mean, at this point, so so I think the issue is right now we're looking at a residential subdivision, two lots, three, right, two, two. two. Well, the road's a road, so it's not going to be. It has to be a road. It can't be a lot. Has to be a road dedicated to the town of Park. Right. Okay. Right. right. So, so that's the question. I mean, ultimately, if she, uh, there, if it's it's supposed to be a residential subdivision, it has to meet all the qualifications, whatever our codes guy says for residents. Right, but I don't understand why we would have the proposed septic and the proposed building on there if she's just doing a subdivision. That comes later on. It well, because if we if we accept this map. Mm -hmm. And we're saying we're accepting the septic and we're accepting the building. No, no, but what, when it goes to county, the county's going to look and make sure that the, it's reasonable for septic. It, the signatures that happen at county. So that happens at county level. Um, and right now, does it meet our requirements for some for residential subdivision is the question. So it's a it's the bulk regulations and whether it's a reasonable development of the land, right? The, the one thing that I see that's a, that's a little, that you might want to look at is, I'm not really sure what's happening with that, this piece right below um, and why, you know, so it's, a, it's a flag lot. My, yeah, my initial thought, and I know you addressed it to Sally saying that council advised prospective buyer not to, um, give us any plans but if that happened that would answer that question of what's happening with yeah. the rest of it to conceptually make but a it's decision a weird, but right it's a weird like how like that can't could that be lots i don't know what the well well if, i think you're looking if, built, if they build Okay, as the map is right now, mm -hmm. and they've got this short mm -hmm. stub road right. with the turnaround. If it was further developed, I'm envisioning that road would have to be extended. And yeah, somebody would have 
that included with their lot much almost like Sally is right proposing with her lot yes but it's it's a strange um it's a strange configuration because what is below the road doesn't look like it can be anything yeah you know except that it'll yeah. my street where i live now mm -hmm. we have a circle and then there's two houses further down in a, a private driveway but they needed to have road frontage they needed the 250 feet on clearwater circle this is where i am just across the falls so there's two strips across the street from me yeah. i'm trying to show it to you on the what, big map the, that i what's have the up. frontage on clearwater mm -hmm. so yeah. the, the, the same it's it's an r40 subdivision across even though some of these homeowners have integrated part of the ag district to their properties. So for an example, lot one over here has 250 feet or whatever the proper frontage is on Clearwater Circle. And each of the one, two, three, four, five lots has the requisite frontage that is required. Um, this funky little you know <laughs> yeah i mean the, the developer it was necessary for him i think it's 150 feet but because it's an r40 across the stream but the point the point is is that same kind of thing could be done here and if this is a town road and further subdivision down the road needed to be done to create four lots back here, the road could be extended Crazy. and a circle put in so that the right frontage was available to each of the lots back here. I, I'm just, Kevin, are you following me? Having trouble with this strip that's below the road. Correct, what, what, what is the dimension of that strip below the road? What is the dimension? Can't read it from here. Okay, so at the roadway, it's 118 feet from the outer edge of the road to to the lot line that's below it, and then it's quite a ways in. But you're talking about what could be here, and what could be here might not necessarily be residences. There's other land uses that that could be put to if this was extended and the proper amount of frontage was given to the 20 acres in the back. Such as. I mean, people were talking about um, art parks, you know, where people put sculptures and people <laughs> come view them. I, I, it, I don't know if that will ever. You have to be. have a road and parking and all that. If yeah. You're so, do that. Yeah. But I, I'm not sure <clears throat> what the person buying the 21 acres will do with that strip. It might be incorporated near the back in one of the lots. And it might only be used screening or something for the roadway. I mean, that particular section is going to be next to a road, and maybe it will be developed more in the line of screening or something else versus actual, you know, land use. It might be that one of the back lots could incorporate some of the lower part of the strip into a proper size lot, you know? But <clears throat> the placement of um, the roadway is basically where that one driveway, egg driveway goes in, and that's where. Um, Actually, no, um, and the, the, the highway superintendent was concerned that if the road was where the current access to the lot is, where the no trespassing sign and the and the lock and the chain are, that the road would cause disturbance to the home directly across the street from it. So it's moved more center to the 250 feet in order to avoid traffic lights being shown into the, into the road, across, the house across the street. But that is the, the place where um, highway superintendent 
indicated that that would be the only suitable location for a roadway. Yes. And here were here were the problems. Um, there's a there's a stone wall um, right up against the 20 foot ingress and egress that you see above Hootnick Way, and it didn't give enough sight distance if you got closer to the stone road, the stone wall. And then on the other side, the house appears on the lower side. And so if the roadway was moved toward where the current access is, car lights would, would go right into the living room of the person across the street. So that's the place that he felt was most appropriate for a roadway. It, and the truth is, guys, for well, all I know, the buyer will, will build their own home on this lot near the water and maybe not further develop it. I mean, that's that's for the future. This is just to make Sally able to move forward with her plans yeah. and and conform with your it's rules intended. related to um, frontage. May I speak informally because I'm not on the docket today? And then it would answer some questions that you may have because I'm the buyer. Excellent. <laughs> Just <laughs> stay, stay, stay your name. <laughs> so my name is, um, shall I say it? Uh, my name is Keisha Baranello and I- How do you spell in, your name? It's C-A-S-S-I-A. -S 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 my name is Baranello, B-A-R-A. N E L L O. Um, and I live in Colorado and um, I'm a realtor in Colorado, licensed also in New York and in Wyoming. And this land, um, I have three young children. They're four, eight, and 11. And this property, what I intend to do in it is live on it, but not yet and build a house someday for myself. I'm not going to, I don't have the intentions to make a subdivision in it. However, I do have three kids and I would like to be able to survive, divide eat that property eventually into three lots or four lots for each of my children so that they may have access to that land. I have one child that's a farm school kid. Um, he's eight and that land has, I think about eight or nine acres of farm land to it. Uh, right now, I think the best use of that land is to continue farming it, even though it has not been farmed recently. Um, I don't know. Have you farmed it recently? No. Um, and so that lower part at the hammerhead, I feel like the best use of that would be there's the farm goes down to the flat because that's a topo map. And so I'll walk up to this. Uh, Diane, will you just make it a little bit smaller so we can see the whole uh, sure. mark of the map so that we sure. can see the whole plot? So this How's that? part right, yeah, that's good. So this part right here is the flat portion um, <clears throat> to farm in, and I think the best way to that is to utilize this entrance road and then make perhaps, I don't know, put a, a barn or some type of uh, place to store equipment in it and farm this land for now. And maybe eventually, I know there's requirements for the work test would be to put a house back here before it starts dropping down. And that's based on this road and these requirements. But really, I think for now, for the next, I don't know, my kid is eight, so 10 years, he'll be 18. Next 10 years, figure out how to farm that or rent it out to maybe Farmer Greg. I hear there's a Farmer Greg out there that likes to farm. So, you know, that's the plan as we move forward. To answer some questions, it's a start. <laughs> that's the dream, at least.
you had a protest done or anything on that, like where you're proposing the septic? septic. The, the land across from- I can do it until I sell the land. So I'm waiting to sell the land. And then when I have the money, I can start to plan the building. But until I know I can do that, I've been putting a lot of money into this yeah. and I can't keep going forever no, without knowing. Well, the, the, the perk test just tells you whether or not the land is suitable for yeah. septic. Yeah. yeah. And there's a way around that if it's not. Right. Yeah. We have every reason to believe based on the lots across the falls and the homes around the area and the type of vegetation, et cetera, that there will be a location within the five acres that will perk appropriately for septic. Um, it doesn't, it, it, it's not the type of, of loam and the type of ground that doesn't perk. Um, so it, we can't guarantee it will be in the location where we have the proposed septic system, but somewhere within this five acre lot, we're hopeful that there'll be a, an area that will perk appropriately. Um, it, it, we don't view it as a, um, something that we should be so concerned about. Certainly as you get closer to the stream, there's a lot of granite and other rock that would be difficult but here where there's a lot of field and mature trees we feel it'll be something that will find a location that's appropriate which is why i would leave the proposed site off the map to be honest with you okay so that's what we're here for so from a sketch plan perspective you'd like to take the buildings off at the preliminary subdivision review? I, I, that's just my opinion is that, you know, the argument could be made in the future that, no, this is where you said you were going to put it. Why don't put it there? Yeah, right. I, it does not need to be on there. I, I think for discussion purposes, mm -hmm. it's fine. And if there was some reason where, why we wanted a big building envelope, but this would not be that no, type of no. situation, but it's helpful. Well, for the discussion for the discussion but the final maps for the subdivision i would leave them off okay yeah that that will be done they'll be taken off i guess my what I, what i i just want the, the board to look at so i'm it was very helpful to have this future developer here um so we have regulations how big a lot needs to be we, we discourage flag lots we know that there was a a, um, a big issue with um, Mrs. Hoofnick, you know, getting road frontage. So she would need to build this road. That would be part of what she would need to do. Um, and the, the question about is then the remaining lot suitable for the way it, that it's configured? So this is for this board to decide. I struggle a little bit with it. I might ask Mr. Bargabas as you know, some of his building background, what you think about this kind of a configuration. Um, and you know, as a member of this board, is it is it a reasonable development of this land, or it does it make more sense to have? Well, I guess it, it wouldn't make sense to have the road down further. Why not? Because I don't think there's enough frontage then for the remaining lot. Right. That would be that a would problem. Be. That's why they. That's, that's why, why that is in the T like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems as though you know the road would meet the strict <clears throat> definition of a conforming lot. It has the frontage. I don't know if is the depth part of. Well, we would have to make some kind of finding. It is a, it would be a flat lot, you know, and it, that's discouraged. Um, but it's not prohibited. It looks like a flag, but I'm not sure it meets the definition of flag lot because it has the requisite frontage. You know, I mean, I think it's. Um, I have to look it up, but I, it has to do with how much road frontage versus how much. It you know, it, back, how yeah, much it extends yeah. in the back. It's not so that, I don't know. Issue. So, I mean, if, it, if that's there, that would be, you know, helpful. I can't really make a decision. It, 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 it's a flag. 
It is a flag. Yeah, it's a flag lot. There's just it's mm -hmm. depth and distance. Right. Yeah, right. It's not a very square flag, but it's a flag. Right. Right. So, you know, do you think this is reasonable? And and it, if it were to be developed into more lots in the future, two hundred does that count for something? Then? The two hundred is the, the length of the road. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. yeah, the, new the current, road. the current. Um, that's, that's what gets her. That's what gets her the two hundred feet of frontage just for her location. No, no two lots. Two lots. Both on this side, right? This side. And that's for both lots, right? Right. Okay. So unless there's a depth requirement, then she's meeting the strictest mm -hmm. now yep. definitions of our code, making this a regular lot, not a flag lot. Correct. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's strange, but in order for this for lot 18 to exist, a oh, one B. I mean one B. I knew it was one B. <laughs> I, I wrote it there. With there. Um, it needs the appropriate frontage. Right. Which you're and saying it has with that road. Right. It's just got a squirrely beginning that there's really nothing you can do with it. So All right. right. It's not wide enough so to it, build a house or so I know, but a row of cherry trees or something. Having, you know, I like cherry. No, this is one of the apple trees, for goodness sake. You know, I mean, um, <laughs> there's the uses that can houses. be put to that don't involve buildings. So, and I think that the buyer is an agricultural minded person and a family minded person and I don't th I think she understands the limitations of the lot as Sally now does um, as a result of the small amount of frontage on Brickyard Falls Road and I think the way for Sally to move forward with her desires to have you know there's, there's really not a lot we can do with this lot and because of the way it's configured and it, either we leave it as it is and do nothing and and that's a sadness or we figure out a way that we can conform to the requirements without a variance and that's a very expensive road we're looking at um so clearly sally has had to consider whether she's willing to make that investment in order to move forward and apparently she does and that's why she's here for your commentary so that she can do what she hopes to do she's been as she said working on this for a long time and and she's invested a lot in it so far so 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 what you know what we look at is the future so what potential issue could there be in the future if your 18 year old or eight year old 18 years old decides i want out of here i want to sell this for some to somebody what what's the downside for that next purchase of that property is there a downside to that well there's a potential road um no, that's sure. going to serve both parcels it's probably not a bad thing i mean the other thing that really hasn't been talked about is whether um a variance is a better option it can be so can I build a driveway on that strip so, yes. from the end of that road? I can build a driveway to the back there? The way I see it, you would be able to, but for just yeah. one house. They're only going to get one lot out of this. So right, you just for one house. Oh, yeah, see, that's the issue. In order to divide it into more than one more lot, you need to extend the public road out past that road. Oh, right, okay. And make a circle that allows for the frontage at the end of that the road. That makes it difficult for the in the future breaking it up to more houses because there's not so there's only frontage for one house yeah at the moment be, uh, we could decide it again right now but in the in the future yeah. um as they did with clearwater circle um even though these lots are very strange configurations each of them has the requisite frontage and you know that's uh if it would only be three lots in the future, if it were for the three children or four lots total in the future, there's no reason that a house could go on five acres here and two more houses could go on as long as the road extended to a circle that gave 250 feet of frontage. And if this lot 
this lot has all the frontage it needs. So really the circle would only require three more, you know, frontages on it because this lot, the bottom lot would have it. And then if the circle was in the center. Right. Now? No, I might yeah. only do this, but I would show you, I would want a preliminary plan approval. And that's locked. Showing a road with a circle at the end. Right. With however many lots I want. Yeah. And I that's may only place. build this as a minimal just to get that place right. started. But you want it to be on a plan. Right. Because then, then we, I have no guarantee yeah. otherwise. But guys, ever approve. Yeah. Talk to the. <laughs> so, so we're just trying to get our thoughts yeah. straight, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, sure. so if, if you were to do that and have multiple houses back there and you wanted to do it based on the circle, the road going all the way back in there, mm -hmm. you're on the plan now. Can I ask you about this? But you see, this is where part of the problem is. Some of you are concerned that you're approving something that might not occur because of, you know, whether the septic perks and where it's located. And if it's on the map, then you're kind of pre-approving it. And some of you are concerned that you, you want to see what's going to happen. And I get both sides of that. But from the developer's perspective, the farther we go down the road with approvals, it limits us in the future to what we can do. So we've learned over time that it's better to do things in stages so that in the event, Keisha, for an example, decides she's going to farm half this land and just build one house. She's not foreclosed from doing that and limited to a circle at the end of the road. And if Sally decides that you know, her daughter decides to move home and she wants to put a different kind of residence on it at the site plan phase. That's a different story too. Well, that's and fine. I, I, that's fine. If you want, if, if you want yeah. to do it the way it is and it meets and you can only put one house there, then, you know, you'd have to come back in front of this board in the future in hopes of being able to do it where you could have multiple houses. That, that's and and those things that you spoke in the beginning of those those are our jobs. That's what we're Absolutely. supposed to do. Planning Absolutely. is a long term view of what's going to happen there, and that's what our job is. Is I agree. What happens when they all decide it's time to move? Right, you know? and I agree with you. This and that can I just step in for a minute sure. though? <clears throat> I want just my five acres, right? I would like to sell the other lot to Keisha. However, if it doesn't work out, I will sell it as a single lot to somebody else. I just want to sell it. Yeah. And maybe it won't work out. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> so we could I just want to get going and have a second lot. The discussion. Yeah, absolutely. We could say, you know, you've got the road there, you've got the frontage, sell the lot, both lots conform to that. We don't like the flag lot, but we can do it. And then in the future, when you decide you want to um, three houses back there, you just have to come back before this. Right, board exactly. And, uh, and look at it then, absolutely. That's that's all I want to do, right? Yep, now. yep. <laughs> but you know, the world changes. I don't know if I've ever been to NC Wyeth's studio, but he had, you know, huge, huge paintings and he died. Oh, I could die tomorrow. Great. <laughs> His last painting is still in there. And it's like, this is taking me so long. I'm afraid I'm going to die before exactly. it's done. No, it's been a long time. But it's just because it's an odd one. I know. It's, it's totally so much odd. And I had no clue when I bought it that yep. this would ever be such an issue. Yeah. But for now, I just would like to subdivide it into two lots and not overthink the future. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. It conforms if, if we don't mind the flag line, it conforms. After the road is built. After the road is built, obviously the road would have to be built. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I usually ask everybody if they've done a protest or not. And to me, that's standard. Um, knowing that it hasn't been done, that, yeah, your septic could be in that place or it could be different. So I kind of. My gut feeling on that is to leave that off until you know for sure and have those results. Yeah. Um, with this plan, it does meet the road frontage. The flag lot, yeah, we're they're frowned upon, but yet when I look at the entire map and look at what some of these other look like. Right. I, guess, I mean, on my knowing street, that it's an odd, everybody planted trees along those strips. And it's beautiful. It's an odd shape 
to start with because of different things that have happened over the years. Yeah. Yeah. My gut feeling right now, it's the best thing that we could do at this point without doing variances. Mm -hmm. So my two cents. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I like that we had the discussion about the fact that there is there are possibilities in the future. I think that's great. Uh, I, I'm okay with the way it is as, as drawn there, you know, with, with the road. And the future will be what it is. I know there's other properties that uh, are similar in a sense where there's two lots, you know, people own two lots and one of them is really a flag lot, the other they aren't. And uh, so we do have a few in this, in this town. Yeah, when I bought my house on Windy Hill Lane, it had been divided into a flag lot in case somebody wanted to build a house behind my house. You know, I got two tax bills and I couldn't figure out why, and it's because they put that flag lot in there. And uh, you know, I've since done away with it, but I, I get that, and they're not against the law, or the rules, yeah. but it's frowned upon them, but anyway. Um, so yes, it does meet, and I'm fine with that. I know you really have struggled for a long time to get this this going, and and uh, understand that it has to meet the zoning. And you know, when we first started talking about it, you were going to have a sink, and then maybe a bed, and then maybe a shower, and you know, so it became more of a house than than you know. I, maybe I get that, that might have been the yeah um I, and that steered us in a direction that was hard to and i'm sorry you know. if it was like that because for me it's always just been a workspace correct and, and correct. you know yeah i need to open up some more sleeping space in my main house yes, yes. <laughs> but that space no i don't think i'd want anyone sleeping there yeah. but for conforming you she wouldn't have to come back to this board correct right yeah. you wanted to conform yes yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you have any comments, though? Uh, this looks good to me. And uh, like I said, for the future, whoever buys the bath is going to have to put up with what kind of road goes to the bath. Whether it's just a keep it in a one lot and you dead end the road into their driveway, right. house driveway. And if they're going to split it up, they'll they'll have to do that later. Yeah, just build a bigger road and right. turn around. You sure cul de sac in there and. Uh, yeah. But for what uh, she wants to do, this looks fine. And and since he's you know only eight years old, that's ten years from now. Hopefully, I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you will be. So we'll remember it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for purposes, you know, well, you said he's almost eighteen, and I find that he's going to count. Okay, that's <laughs> You got to be eight real quick, didn't you? Yeah, you did. <laughs> so for purposes of our next meeting to move forward to preliminary subdivision approval, I've heard that you don't currently want the two buildings on lot 1B located and that you'd like, I imagine, some more information on the road that's being constructed and perk test. Other than that, for preliminary subdivision approval, is there any other change we can make that the that the board as you're considering this would like us to do? Just to be clear, <clears throat> you can leave those on there. We okay. are suggesting that it's probably not a good idea. Okay, but that's sure. up to you. I got and it. We're not demanding that they come off. Yeah, we don't want them on. Right. I'm going to take them off just so they don't bother anybody, and that leaves us with a lot of options about where to place uh, a proper system to perk. Take them off. Put the guy right here. White out. You got that? <laughs> okay. Um, John, anything else? Oh, yeah, just let me go through my list here. So you're you're approving or potentially approving a two lot subdivision with a parcel to be dedicated to the town of Pompey for future use as a high. So it's I, I don't know if it's a three lot subdivision or two. Well, it's contiguous. It's, it's contingent on building the road. Right. Right. So my next comment is that no build. If you approve this, that there should be no building permit issued until the road is constructed, approved by everyone. Um, and that that leads into the fact that we don't want to show any buildings on there. No indi no indication that you're approving any type of structure on these lots until that road is completed and accepted, because otherwise it's a non-conforming lot. 
Right. And that will be a contingency and the approval will be that the road be built. So nothing right. will happen until right. it's built. And I might it's suggest built. another contingency of approval that no further subdivision can be done on that remaining lot until the road is existing. Right. Right. Um, I want to confirm that the town highway department has approved the location of the road. I know I heard the applicant state that there had been some discussion, but I think that should be on the record for this board before you approve even the location of that right away. You want to make sure that the town highway superintendent has approved that as a as an acceptable location for a new town road. Um, Is there a way? Go ahead. Technical details: the hammerhead itself, that that um, at the end of that right away, you're going to have a 60 foot right away, and then there's the hammerhead to turn around. That becomes a temporary. Um, kind of land use that could be surrendered back to the property owner. So I don't know if that wants to be an easement or a parcel or, or a permanent parcel right now. It doesn't have to be. Um, that's something to think about. And then as I reviewed the EAF, there's um, the, this, this property is located in an archaeological sensitive area. There are wetlands noted, there are floodplains noted, and there are potential threatened and endangered species on the property noted. So as you go through the secret form, you want to make sure you note and acknowledge uh, all of those items. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a major significant environmental impact, but you want to make sure that uh, it's noted as you go through the secret I appreciate that information. And can you tell me, is it a bald eagle or something else? It's the- uh, uh, if, you go, if you go on the, the uh, EIF mapper website, they will answer several of those questions for you. Thank you. Where these Thanks. Up. Okay. Yeah, on, the part, on the part one EIF, you want to acknowledge those four things. Sure. Sally, we have a break in the action. You know who NCY is, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do I ever? Yeah. Even have you been to the studio? No. You left it just the way it was when he. Yes. But I, I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Look on it. Um, Priscilla yeah. met with you on the location for <laughs> roadway slash driveway and all that discussion. Did he hand you anything written? We met at the site with a with a rolling measure, and I was dead set on convincing him that the road should go where the current entrance to the property is. And we debated it for a long time and measured and talked and measured and talked. And finally, he said, there's only one location that is suitable. And the location that he gave me we marked together and measured together. And then I provided that information to um, Bob Porcello the day it happened. But I can, I don't know if he's moved away, retired, or if I can contact him or or what, what we, or we can meet out there again with the new highway superintendent and, and do it all over. Frankly, Sally would prefer it not be where it is, but it is what he said. So I'm communicating that to you. Long story short, though, he didn't type up a letter or you have a letter from him. I don't that. have anything in writing okay. from him is the short answer. Okay. Except what it says at the very bottom of that page that you said, and it says the highway superintendent met with the attorney for the applicant on site and determined there was only one location available to the proposed driveway in the future town road. And it's located exactly where he determined it should be. That's right. That's all true. And I, if we got a hold of him, he would he would remember it was it was a it was a long debate, <laughs> and it it had to do with some limiting circumstances within the 250 feet that exist there, having to do with a stone wall, the north side, and a house across the street on Brickyard Falls. There you have it. So how would you like me to proceed in that regard? Um, do you, should I con contact the new highway superintendent, call the old one, uh, you know, <laughs> this is gonna require a tree be taken down and the current access moved. It's gonna be more expensive for Sally to do it where it is, but it, that's what he said. So just being honest. 
So we should have a letter from the an official letter from the uh, highway super uh, the current the current current, yeah. current and also you know the fire department should be um, also talk to about mm -hmm. and get get a letter from them saying yeah we're good with your your turnaround and it's going to serve them appropriately okay um, and then uh then submit the preliminary that actually the plan it's it, we're going to go straight to final plan right it's because it's a it's just a two lot subdivision mm -hmm. and um bring that in and we can call for the public hearing um mm -hmm do whatever you know if you think that we're we would be good enough to call for a public hearing at the next at for the next meeting um they probably can get everything in line i know you don't call for public hearing sorry but, no, it's talk about that, but just just kind of to get a timeline sure i mean i would love to have this completed this summer um i know everybody gets busy and i'm still waiting for our engineer exactly. to provide um his his engineered drawings for the for the highway um so we can start hiring contractors and whatnot but there's no point in any of that until we get final subdivision approval so right U ultimately yeah. the highway department um is going to have to prove everything the town attorney is going to have to prove the uh, the road dedication there's going to be a number of um conditions yeah. on any approval so and we'd have to get some maps on a timely basis so we can look at it. It's a little difficult looking at it tonight, but if we're going to move fast on it, we want to get sure. final I, as maps. As soon as I get all the adjustments done to this, I will make sure that you have uh, full size maps at the next meeting. I'm, I apologize. Oh, prior to the next meeting. Right, of course. I mean that. I mean that as well. But I think before we do the public hearing, we should have the letters from the highway, right? The right. Fire department, and then since the public hearing. Right. Absolutely. We have those in hand before. Right. It goes in. Not the day before, but plenty of sure. time to get it on the on the schedule. Right. And then it, that goes well. Then maybe the following month. I, I would say that <laughs> would um, given everything that you've. Um, yeah, uh, requested it might be that i need to push it to the may i mean the, the june hearing but if we had final subdivision approval uh by june that would that would make my client really happy um so it and giving you some lead time and getting the maps changed and getting the fire department and the highway superintendent and everybody um on board as well as um getting our engineer to provide the roadway um, report it's going to take some time do you know what our submission <laughs> is so uh, there could possibly be a public hearing in may but then a decision in june okay i i we could leave, yeah we could leave it we could have the public hearing open but at least have the public hearing at the next meeting if if you can meet the deadline which is in a couple weeks i think Right, it'll be the first. And then our engineer has to look everything over. Sure. Yeah. Well, this is all very encouraging. And um, now that I've been um, waiting, now we're going to hurry up and get this done. I promise Sally. I, and I'm going to do what's necessary now that we have an idea that this is something that, that could be approved, get, get the show on the road. We can ask Mr. Porcello if he thinks he can get a map in a couple weeks. <laughs> I'm not worried yes. about that. No. All right. I'm he's not worried he's about here. I, mean, you're, you're, I know. Right. That saved a call. Well, it does. And, you know, it, it's helpful because, you know, he's heard this discussion now. So Although he decide. forgot the maps tonight. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> Did you this the poor other maps? man has had to do so many For versions one, of yeah. this map. He probably was like, was that for the third rendition or the, yeah, he, he, he's busy too. Um, we all are, but we need to get you what you need to make this right. So I'll be all over it. Yeah, we'll get what you need. I'm like doing a big piece of art. It takes a lot of <laughs> revisions. It is hard. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a painting take that long. <laughs> Are, is there anything else we can tell the board? Mr. Stringer's been patiently waiting for this through this debate. Anything else I need to know before we say goodbye? And and uh, I'll be in touch with you if it's okay, uh, Jamie, unless you want me to call somebody else about um, the list of necessaries other than what's been discussed here. I think that um, 
Do, do you want to send your, your comments separately? Um, or I think they're in the minutes. Okay. They're not there. It's up to you. You want me to do it? Yeah. Remote? No, I mean, I, what I, what we need is just what whatever is required for a preliminary subdivision map submitted to Nikki at the town hall and get the map. Um, put on the, the things that Mr. Dunkel just talked about. Mm -hmm. And then the we, seeker. we can look at it. Well, yep. the seeker, the seeker, you're gonna you're gonna fix the that was you know what that was more to us when we go through the seeker. Yeah. Sorry. So but I think it would be helpful for to have a, a summary of your comments. Okay. You know, so, so we have a, like a checklist. The question for procedure here. The road has to be designed, and I and the, myself and the town highway superintendent have to approve the design. Right. Do you guys want that done before you approve the preliminary subdivision, or do you want to do it as a condition of approval that the subdivision isn't valid until the road has been constructed? Do you think you'll have a problem with design? I, Steve Calcerinos has been working on it and Never he's know. had some. <laughs> okay. Never know. He's um, been limited. He's been very busy himself, I know. Um, I told him a few weeks back that we hope to have his report for tonight's meeting, but I was initially thinking it would be for preliminary subdivision approval, but then we moved because we. We sold off some of the property and we wanted to start again at the sketch plan, which is all fair enough. I think I certainly will have it um for you assuming steve can can do it i know he needed some elevations that bob provided to him a week or two ago so i'm hoping he's almost done and i don't jamie, think if we a make problem. a contingent jamie it, it's the burdens on them anyway nothing yeah. can happen until that happens yeah i mean you might in I mean, general, so if you want the if you want the design made and approved before you can have a public hearing, I don't I don't think before the public hearing, but I think we can still do the public hearing and then right before the final subdivision. So I mean, we're a couple months off. Yeah, that makes so sense. Keep it moving. Yep. If, well, we're essentially going to be approving a preliminary plan. We're going and to we'll give them vested rights. I believe we're going to approve a final plan. Because they'll have the drawing, yes. they'll have the uh, okay. driveway approved by that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because have to do it conditional. Yeah, yeah, but you yeah, can't yeah. file your final plan until it's done, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. The timing of getting all the info back in here, which I'm in my mind, if they want to be on through May, that everything's back in here by May 2nd, because they also would have to turn around and get the public notice out for the right hearing. Mm -hmm. Yes. So to me, that's kind of the, the trigger. Mm -hmm. Time is flying by. It is. So are you saying if I have everything in there by May 2nd, assuming that I can get everything by that? time that you could schedule the public hearing but if not then it would be pushed to the june date and then it would be by you then know, it might be two meetings but it depends on how far along everything is right okay all right okay. all right i will address all the issues that were raised tonight and get everything that the board has requested to you including new maps um updated seeker um fire department approval a letter from the highway superintendent um i'm going to have to schedule some kind of meeting out there um to to review the location of the road unless i can get mr can i can i contact mr rodriguez and see if he'll do the letter there is a yeah. Mr. Rodriguez doesn't work here anymore. I know. Okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, the current highway superintendent, then I'll get a letter from him and have him maybe meet us at the site and, and see if he agrees with the location. I, I just want to make sure that the right place. So location and drainage management along the highway. So right. Driveway cul Steve's road culverts on. and all those things are going to be needed mm -hmm. too. Yes. Um, Steve is working on all of that, but he's working on it based on this location. 
And so I, it's kind of the chicken or the egg thing. I, I'm quite sure that whoever looks at it's going to have the same feeling, but one never knows. So, and, uh, and Jamie, put in there, I want to um, maybe a note to Nikki or whatever, make sure that this gets sent to ECC. Thank you. Do we guys. send this to the county as well? Uh -huh. Is that ECC? Thanks. Nice meeting you guys. Thank you. Good luck for the next 10 years. Yeah. Well, I know I got there for life, right? <laughs> Thank you. See you next Good time. Good night. They should be able to look up some of that info on um, for the secret questions. Yeah. Well, when, when, the, when this plan comes in, hopefully by May 2nd or thereabouts, then Nikki can send the whole thing in to everybody. Mm -hmm. We can still have a public hearing in May. We can keep it open or close it and not make a decision. All the information is in there. Mm -hmm. yes. and, the and, and John's going to deliver a, um, a comment letter. Okay. To the so do you expect any neighbors, or, like anybody up in arms about what you want to do? Just curious. You never know. No. <laughs> Honestly, not marching up and down with signs right now, though, are they? No, okay. but <laughs> I mean, I've had I've had some run-ins with hunters that border my land that want to hunt on it. They have been hunting on it for years, and they're distressed when I ask them not to. So there's, you know, there's a few of them. Out yeah, there. yeah, I get it. Yeah. And, Hopefully not. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, they could hold it all up, right? For right. now. They can come in and say their piece, but it's not their it's land. Not their land. Right. Yeah. yeah. We get that out here too. <laughs> yeah. Problematic yeah. sometimes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Great Thank show. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yes. Thanks so much. Thank you, Diane. Okay. Next on the agenda, Stringer Simple Subdivision, David Stringer, Orange Station Road, and Kitty Wake Run. Uh, two parcel number 005-02-01.4 and 01.6 preliminary plan. They're supposed to be the final. For, for Kitty Way for five lots. They brought that over. Come on up and talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Bob. Yes. Do you mind if I say a few words first? Oh, go right ahead. I just wanted to thank thank the board for allowing me to, to join. To... I just wanted to thank the board for allowing me to join by Zoom tonight. Bob is representing me because I am uh, not in the state. And this is the first time that I've been in front of the board since uh, approximately 009 and it is for the the last section of Mallard Landing that is in the town of Pompey and it's set section 16b. So these are the different phases. This here shows you you did two lots and one, three lots and two, two lots in. This is what was a section four or three. Now he's doing four over here. And he actually has the final date. So they wrote right at it too. And then after the file, he turned over the This is just showing this kind of copy. So you yeah. see the whole thing. <coughs> this is where it could be pretty and simple. Doing, so I'll combine it. Okay. What is this? That's the one that was presented before. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I have. Yeah. 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 Last clerk, and that would have to be a new Didn't make sense. Her, maybe she got I think it was just a bunch of time. Hmm. So, I mean, we were prepared to look at a, a lot line adjustment to be moved to us. And that's not what we're doing tonight? Nope. So, this, this, that's that, what we map that you have was a lot line adjustment between two lots. And that's not happening. He just, no, it's happening. He just presented a four lot subdivision. Okay. Five lot subdivision. It's a, of it's, those, it's, those it's totally from the preliminary plan. It's totally different. There was some confusion. Then at the, uh, okay. Sue has the one that they want to. So, <laughs> I brought all the maps for the two for the right. It's just these that no, need to be there. signed. Yes. As a lot line adjustment. Which is fine. Which you're so going to be, understand what he was trying to I, do. Yeah. And I so thought the lot we were talking about. The lot line adjustment. So there is no is fine. Line. He's done all that. So the maps right. are done. Oh, that doesn't need right. anything. Right. No. Right. right. So it doesn't need anything. Right. Okay. So this, okay. That's done. So so I'm not this, is, this has this been, been going on for a while. The, this yeah. lot line adjustment yeah, was before. No. It's just. I guess we'll time out. We'll time out. Right. <clears throat> but right now it's this. Gotcha. That's not two separate pieces. Because I may uh, customer can say how I know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right here. So right here. Let, let's back up. So there was a, a lot line adjustment that came in a long time ago that Steve and I looked at when we didn't have anybody that is ready for signature. That's what this is. It's it's done, but I see that's what got put on. That's what got sent to us. That's yeah. what got sent to you, not this. So where, so now the question, all right, so if everyone can understand that, these, what he was just bringing tonight, kind of as an aside, because he was coming anyway. When I talked about it, I'm like, bring him to my office. He's like, I'm coming here tonight anyway. I'm like, great, so you can sign them. Um, so that got confused with this. So this is the lot line adjustment. You don't need to worry about that. It's already been approved. Steve and I looked at it a long time ago. It's all done. So tonight is 456, 57, 58, 59, and 60. So yeah, apparently, yes, plan. but I'm sorry. Apparently, you guys did not get that. I don't know. But you dropped it off to Nikki. Yep, I dropped it off, and I called to see if it had been received this stuff. Because she was sick the week I brought it over. Ah, okay. And then there was a confusion, I think, on what was coming over to the board. I was for sure it was this, because okay. that's what I dropped off. Oh, no paperwork on it. Well, it's just right. the maps that we're looking at. Well, we can. Well, we don't need, I don't think you need any paper. The seeker's already been done. Well, it's a, so this is a final map. Yes, because we have preliminary approval. We have a preliminary approval, but we don't. But this was all approved, right? That was the original subdivision. Which was approved. Lots. That was approved as a preliminary plan. Right. Out of poppy. And, and these five, we're on here and haven't changed. Not in bed. Not at all. So this is, and I don't want to. I don't want to put anyone on the spot because I also, you know, haven't and looked at. It. But if if the if if well, we've been through this before, if it's the same as the original approval, original, then they're here for final subdivision approval, and the seeker's already been done. Then it's approvable as a final plot plan. Problem is nobody has for sure looked at the prelim unless we want to do it's, that on the fly now. I got a copy of a written. That's this. That's okay. that. Without the And the row's been built. I'll leave. Oh, yeah. 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 Nothing. Nothing. It's, it's just not even. Yeah. Yeah. Forget yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's not the same. Thing. Yeah. So it doesn't affect the configuration of any no. of these lines. No. Not at all. 
There was two right. lots yeah. that were yes. in the preliminary plan here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So this is all. It's in the same section. Okay. Right. But it's yeah. not the, that lot line adjustment's in the same section. It's just not as an effect. But you need to compare the preliminary plan to the final plan. You know, the frontage is the same, the lot sizes are the same. And is the road dedicated? Absolutely. It's there. Yeah, we're going to the here. So I can see them on here. So 457 from the north. Years ago when they built the first two homes. 57. Yep. 58. 960. So, Jamie, if that's the case, do we do we need a motion or how does that? Yeah, it would be a motion yeah. to approve a approve the final subdivision plan as presented, dated X, whatever this date is, because it is in substantial conformity with the preliminary plan already filed. That would be the motion. Okay, can you write that down so I can say it back to you? <laughs> but I again, I'm you, you're looking at it. I don't know how to change. Does everyone else feel that way? Did everybody look it's at It's exactly this? the same. Yeah, Def no change. The demand oh, was exactly the same. I can believe him. No. <laughs> <laughs> looking at it, I said he didn't want to make any changes anyway that would have required too much effort. Yes. <laughs> So basically, you're just combining two into one. No, just no. no, no that this was is off the other table. That's yeah. right. All we're doing is we're now just taking five lots. Final on approval on those five lots. And oh, so, okay. will this final? Will this be the final five lots on Kitty Way to yes. be? There'll only be two left. All right, Kitty Way will be all done. Right, and there'll only be the two, two here. back here. And and you and these. So we're not approving those. Just, no, you're just this, on the road. Just, just on Kitty Kitty way. Way. This is the, there's nothing yep. else on Kitty Way. No, these this right. we got the map over here. These two are approved. Yeah. Yeah. These three are approved, and then those kinds of things are That's these. Right. 50, 51, 52, 53. Okay. Right. Okay. All the way down. Yes. Okay. Those are all approved lots. No. So this is. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, because all the utilities are in, all the users yeah. are in. Yeah. It's all used to be farmland. <laughs> yeah. Just one quick question. Yes. With those combination of lots and stuff, there will still be these two. Okay. So these two are going to the property to the south. So Jamie the order, represents license. The uh, answering. We have right. 100 lots. Okay. And then the only two lots left is after the chunks. We filed the final slide. I wonder if this is what we supply of the nice station road. Yeah, the heavy road. This one's already built. No, that's just sound. That's not the case. This one got joined into this. These two were joined together. Final with all this because this might be the same. Oh, they have a lot of stuff crisscrossing on it. Right, right. They joined the whole bag. You get a bill. Mr. Stringer's one. He's like, Chris, no, he got it. Dan Stringer's in the south. Because if you so these way. lots for them have a driveway so off of Warren Station. Station. Yes, yeah. okay. yeah. that was always the plan. Okay. okay. Right for value. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Kind of simple, though, only because the road and all the and easements and everything involved in, but I'm, and all on file. So all those what parcel is it actually? I go to the person. It's part of. You did not kill me. Yeah, I just got this one. This parcel here, which was the other. That would have been that divided. Lot one. It would have been that tax parcel. It was going to build a house. Four five. Lot of tax. Okay. 
All right, what do you need? You ready for a motion? Right now. Are you ready for a motion or are you ready for a motion? You've already got it ready. <laughs> Go ahead. Who's gonna make the motion? All right. I make a motion that we approve the five lot subdivision uh, on Kitty Wake Run um, based on the preliminary approval. Uh, preliminary approval map from 3 2 of, of 2004. And the map we are approving for final approval is uh, 2022. April 5th of 2022. DW Hamming LSPC. And with, and the, with the finding that the um, Final map presented is in substantial conformity with the preliminary plan. With the, what she said. Finding. That with, with the final map is in conformance with the preliminary map, which it seems substantially. And we've reviewed both maps and it does look to be uh, in compliance with the original map. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're in a movie tonight. Yes. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> I'm going to get her snowblower back up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, motion to approve. Aye. 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 And one motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I like to use. Yeah. You want to sign this? Yeah. So much Thank time. Thank you. Yeah. Can I ask a question, please? Yes. Yeah. First thank of all, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, greatly appreciated. <clears throat> and I request that the board give the chairman the authority to to sign the uh, final plans um, after they have Onondaga County Health Department approval and the other necessary approvals. Uh, we can add that to the motion, but that's I think standard. we just did. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm almost in what you were doing. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> no. Motion to um, adjourn. I'll second the motion. Yeah. Who motioned it? Sue <laughs> motion to adjourn. Kevin okay. seconded second the motion to adjourn. All in favor, aye. Aye. Sue and Kevin.